Hello, welcome to another video. What's inside this PC and will it work? Um, it's pretty cool looking. It's quite stylish. It's got kind of it's kind of plastic, but it looks metallic. The Zoo Storm. I don't know. Oh, look, that folds forwards like that. Um, and there's an eject button, but it, where is the power button? Um, I think there's a little button on the top here. Yeah, a little power button there. So let's um, spin it round, show you the back. Um, and we've got a power supply, USB 3, which is blue, normal USB, um, VGA and DVI. Audio network and keyboard mouse, no expansion cards, no fan here as well, which is a shame. But yeah, let's open it up, have a look what's inside. And maybe, if we're lucky, <laughs> it will work. Um, so, we've got a... Is that a mini ITX or micro ATX? It's definitely small and it could have gone further down here, couldn't it? Um, it's a Gigabyte GAH81M-S2V. So this should be a fourth gen Intel. Um, we've got an FSP group power supply here. Um, 250 watts. We've got um a western digital blue hard drive let me just make this brighter so you can see 24 pin power connector there sata drive this is a one terabyte drive and we've got an optical drive at the top um a little this looks like a tiny little caddy for a 2.5 inch tiny caddy for a 2.5 inch drive so you could put an SSD there, for example. And we've got one stick of memory, and let's have a look what that is. We've got Crucial, and it is 8 gigabytes of DDR3. So it's quite a nice amount, um, better than 4, for example. Um, and could be upgraded so that it runs in dual channel. But before doing any of that, let's see if it works. This is interesting that it's not an Intel sticker on here. Um, and let's check the power supply first. So, got the power supply tester here. 24 pin here. And power cable, there's no switch on the back of the power supply, which is a shame. Much prefer being able to switch them on and off if needed. Okay. So we've got 12.3, 12.2, 5.1. 12.2, 3.4, so reasonable, um, should be fine, I think. Let's see if there's anything in the drive, nothing. Okay, so um, I can't switch this off without pulling the power cable out. But let's see if this um, works and see if we boot into an operating system. Two hundred fifty watts isn't that much, really, is it, for a power supply these days? Um, and it doesn't look like there's much in the way of additional connections. Uh, one of these is broken. So there's a Molex, there's a floppy drive connector. Um, is that it? I think that's it. You know, no extra SATA connectors. Um, no connectors for the graphics card, 
So this could be quite a nice little system. Well, we don't know how well it works or if it works yet. We know the power supply works. So let's move on to the next bit, and connect it up. So we're using 1.5 watts. The system is off. So that's how much power these use. And if there's a switch on the back, we could have switched this off um, to save some power. Um, let's press the power button. Fan spinning. Got a hard drive and we've got a boot logo. Let's see if we can go into the BIOS. Now it's started booting Windows. I'm going to switch it off. Try and get into the BIOS. Okay, Gigabyte BIOS. So 3.7 gigahertz, 8 gigs RAM, 22 degrees C for the CPU. I haven't checked the thermal paste, as you can tell. Um, system information. F3 BIOS, 2015. And can you just tell me what the CPU is? CPU i3-4170. So that is one core, or is it dual core? Not sure off the top of my head how many threads this has. But PC health status, this looks like a perfectly working PC. And it's quite nice. I quite like the look of it. It's got a blue light up here for the power. Front USB, front audio. Relatively quiet. It'd be quieter with the side on. But yeah. 44 watts being used. Let's um, boot and then we can have a, another look around. It's got an interesting hard drive light that glows through the USB socket. Um, and I'll just cut to when I can show you some stuff. I don't want to show any um, user information, that kind of thing. And I will obviously wipe this drive at some point. I've connected up um, an SSD drive from another fourth gen system that I've got, uh, the Lego Cube PC, and um, see my other video. Um, and so the system's you, the only noise really is the fan for the CPU, and it keeps kind of changing in like speed and noise levels. Um, using about 58 watts at the moment, but yeah, we should be able to get into Windows and have a look at the system. So um, let's have a look at task manager. Processor is ah, two cores, four logical threads, so 3.7 gigahertz. Um, this is um, Win10 tools, Win10 widgets on this bit here. Um, has it got Wi-Fi? No. Okay. So, yeah, we have a working um, PC. It's quite nice. Um, quite a neat little case. Quite like the look of it. Um, relatively low power when you're not doing anything. 35, 37 watts. Um, Let's have a look at CPU-Z, run a quick bench mark. Nine hundred ninety, maybe was the highest there. That fan is quite annoying, isn't it? If you can hear that. I'll move the camera closer so you can hear it. So let's stress that. Temperature's 60, 
That seems reasonable. Can go up to 100 without, you know, worrying it too much. HD graphics 4400. Quite neat. I like this. I'll have to um, see what I can do with this. Might stick some more memory in, maybe, and could make a um, reasonable gaming system with a graphics card and a different power supply and with an SSD boot drive. Let me know what you think. If you ever used a Zoo Storm PC, are they any good? Looks like a budget option, but reasonable. So we may as well replace the thermal paste on this. It shouldn't be too tricky. Famous last words. Um, I've unplugged everything. The power is not connected. Um, this should come free. And it has dried out. Yep, completely dried out. So let's remove that. And since this is a nicer system, I guess, let's give it some uh, MX2 thermal paste. And make sure you can see. Um, a little bit watery, but that should be, I guess, about enough. Not too much, not too little. And this is the tiny heatsink. It's not got a copper core, but it should do the job. And I'll just give it a little clean off camera as well to get rid of some of the dust. Okay, that's much better, I think. Um, I don't have any spare processors that could upgrade this. Um, but I guess if um, I was going to um, like make this into a beefier system, then upgrading the um, processor could be a good option. Quite a lot of fourth gen CPUs available. Um, make sure they click and then press them down. And we'll just check the thermal temperatures in the BIOS, actually, to see if that's made um, much of a difference. We'll go into Windows and use the same CPU bench to see if the temperatures are dropped at all. So we were using Core Temp and CPU Z. We've got a temperature of 45 at 46, 45 at the moment. And let's just stress the CPU.
I guess, how long do we wait? How long is a piece of string? Um, what were we getting before? I'll check. Okay, so we went up to about 60 degrees C um, with the old thermal paste and now we're getting 55 max. We didn't run it for very long previously and we got up to 60. We haven't run it very long this time. Um, but yeah, 56 is the highest we've got. Um, so yeah, worth changing the thermal paste. Didn't take very long. It was relatively straightforward. And yeah. So anyway, another video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And um, keep coming back for more of this kind of content. All right, thanks. Bye.